God. Sing it again. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. We're children of God, we're adopted into his family. You sing a song of deliverance over us today. acquainted with our grief a man of sorrow son of suffering oh blood and tears how can we that there's a God who weeps there's a God who bleeds oh praise the one who would reach for me Hallelujah to the Son of Suffering. Some imagine you are distant and removed, but you chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the 
the sinner you were grace and the broken you embrace and in the end the proof is in your wounds oh in the end the proof is in your wounds oh blood and tears how can it be there's a god who there's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Hallelujah to the Son of suffering. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your freedom. Your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever. My freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever.
place today to give all the praise and all the glory to Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. How many love God today? How many want to honor him with all of your heart, soul, and strength? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise like he deserves. All praise to King Jesus. He's the reason why we're here. We welcome you today to Life Church. We're so glad that you've joined us today, that you've connected online. And we know that God's grace is enough for each and every one of us. And if you're having an amazing week, we celebrate with you. If you're having a difficult week, we stand in the gap with you. And we hope most of all that you will feel the love and the joy and the peace of God as we've gathered in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Welcome once again to Life Church. Why don't you greet somebody there next to you, and then you may be seated. I want to greet all of you who are watching us online right now. Thanks for connecting to this service today. We pray it will be a blessing to your life. Well, it is great to see each and every one of you. Abigail and I got to get away a little bit this week, a little road trip to Chicago. And um, I do have to, I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but however you want to take it. If, if Once you get to the northern part of Oklahoma, there's this uh, digital readout on the thermometer that's not 100 degrees. It's like 78 and 80 degrees up there. So uh, I just want to bring you those good news. Hopefully we brought a little bit of that cooler weather back with us. Uh, but we, uh, we had a great, a great time, got to visit her grandma, who is about to be 99 uh, here uh, very soon, and uh, just had a, a great time. And it's great to be back home here with each and every one of you guys. I hope you're having a great week. And we're going to do a couple of things right now. Got a couple of exciting things that we want to do in our service today before we get to the word of the Lord. One is we just want to say to anyone who might be visiting with us for the first time, or maybe this is your second or third time back with us and we haven't had a chance to connect, uh, we look forward to connecting with you. And one of the easy ways you can do that is to fill out, fill out a digital connect card. If you prefer to do a hard copy version of that, there should be a little card in one of the seat pockets there close to you. Um, but we would love for you to fill out one of those Connect cards. Uh, you can do so by texting to the church number there. That's our main church number that you can call during business hours. But you can text 24-7, and uh, you can also send us prayer requests and other things. But right now, our focus is for those who might be new here to our church family. If you just want to text the word CONNECT to that number right now, it'll give you a quick little link that you can just follow on your phone. And, uh, and that way we can connect with you and uh, know if there's anything that we can be praying about with you and, and praying for you and your family, your situation, your job, your health. And uh, we had an amazing prayer meeting this last week. We gather every Thursday night to pray at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And you might remember this last Sunday that we talked a lot about prayer. We had everybody send a prayer request in, something that you're thankful for and something that you're asking God for, uh, according to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And so I heard great things about what God did and, and, and how that encouraged so many people. And uh, we're grateful to God for that. But if you are new here to our church family, we'd love to connect with you. So you can just text the word CONNECT there to our main church phone number. You might want to save it there in your phone, that phone number. And, uh, and we, we'd love to connect with you. Well, we're going to get ready right now to, uh, to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. And I want to remind you of a scripture you might have heard before. It's a beautiful scripture from the book of Proverbs. It's from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. And as we get ready right now to give our tithes and offerings, I want to just encourage you with that, to trust in the Lord. You know, any time that we give, uh, it's an act of, of faith. It requires a lot of trust in God uh, that he is going to take care of us. And we have seen the faithfulness of God in our lives. And I want to just encourage you to do that, to trust in God. Don't lean on your own understanding, you know, because our own understanding would think that there would 
never be inflation or a recession, that gas prices would never go up, but things can change pretty quickly in our world, can't they? But I got good news for you. He's got the whole world in his hands. Trust in him. When we walk through valleys, he's there with us. When we're on the mountaintop, he's there with us. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding, your own knowledge, your own know-how, but trust in the Lord in everything, including your finances. And I know that God's blessing will be upon you and that that will be a blessing to so many other people here in our city and all around the world as we continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus to a, to a hurting world, a world that needs the hope of God. If you want to give, you can just text the word GIVE to our phone number there. And that's another thing that you can do just by sending a text. We'll give you the link there. And we'd love for you to participate in that with us. Maybe you've never given before and today is going to be the first Sunday that you're giving. I know it's a big step of faith, but I know that God's blessing is going to be on your life because His Word is true and His Word is faithful. His promises and His covenants are faithful. So let's get ready to give right now. Let's say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person that right now is on their phone in the process of giving their offerings. God, for those who have already given, maybe then they got paid this last Friday. God, I ask that your blessing would be upon their lives and we declare and we receive and proclaim every promise of your word over our lives. That you will rebuke the devourer. God, that we will live in abundance. That you, we will have everything that we need because you are our shepherd and we shall not want. We declare all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I want to do a couple of things before we go to the word of God today. Uh, one is that uh, if you are celebrating a birthday or you've celebrated a birthday here in the last few weeks, you might have received a text message from me. And uh, I would love to shake your hand and tell you happy birthday. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give a shout out to my dad. Today is his actual birthday and it's a big one. He's turning 75 years old. So happy birthday, dad. Yeah. We do have a mug for you, but we've got some other things later for dinner as well. But I'd love to at least give you a mug. Uh, and uh, it's a little coffee mug that says Life Church on it. It's filled with some, some chocolates inside. And uh, I'd love to shake your hand and, and tell you happy birthday at the end of the service today. I'll be right down here in this area. And we we'll look forward to, to giving you that, that, that birthday greeting. Uh, so if it's this week, if it was a month ago and we just hadn't had a chance to connect, I, I, I love any excuse to be able to shake your hand and say hi. Uh, so uh, don't hesitate to come up after the service today and, and say hi. Um, we have some very exciting news for you guys that we uh, have been wanting to announce for a long time, and the pandemic has kind of held us up for two years. Uh, but Abigail and I are going to be hosting a trip to Israel next year in 2023. We're going to be going in the latter part of April, the first part of May, and it is going to be... Uh, over a week long that will change your life. You will never read the Bible the same way again. And uh, so we've got a graphic for you. And uh, just to let you know, you can text the word Israel there to our main church phone number. And when you do, you're going to get just a little quick little uh, form. It, it's not like a thousand questions. It's just mainly a little bit of your info. And that way, we can let you know when we're going to have our first interest meeting. Because you may have a lot of questions. How much does it cost? How long does it, the, is the trip? Um, when do I need to leave here? How do I do the airline part? Uh, what does the trip include? And so we don't want to take time from the middle of our service to go over all those details because for some it may not be something that you're considering right now, but we'd love to go into all those details in depth with you soon in an interest meeting that we'll hold in the middle of the week. And uh, we just want to get your info. If you guys can put that, yeah, one more time there, just text the word Israel to that number right there. It's not a commitment to go or anything. It's just uh, that way we can 
we can know if you have any level of interest in going. It's going to be in April of 2023, this, this next year, the latter part of April, the beginning of May. And uh, it will be nine to 10 days that will change your life and change the way that you are going to read the Bible. Uh, we're so looking forward to to having you join us. It is going to be an amazing time. Abigail and I got to go the first time in the year 2000, and it forever impacted us. And we've been back several times since then. And every time, actually, the really cool thing about it is every time we go back, there's more to discover. There's more there to, to see and to find. Uh, because Israel is a living archaeological dig. They're always digging up something. And um, like this last time we were there in the year 2019, they had unearthed a bunch of the city of Magdala where Mary Magdalene was from. And, uh, and just that wasn't very easily found in the year 2000, the first time we went. And so I'm sure there's going to be a bunch more now that we're going to get to discover together. And uh, it's going to be a blessing to your life. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be historic. Uh, but it's also going to be a spiritual encounter with God. And that's something that Abigail and I, as your pastors, look forward to imparting and sharing with you in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, at, uh, at, at the, the place of, of the cross, at the place of the resurrection. Uh, all these incredible sights that we can enjoy together. So we look forward to, to that. Just text the word Israel if you're interested in finding out more details, and we'd love for you to join us. We'll be in contact soon with uh, the first interest meeting that we'll be hosting. All right. Well, one more thing before we get to the video announcements today uh, is that as a church, one of our core values is marriage and family. We love families here, and today we're going to get to celebrate and dedicate uh, a beautiful little girl, Lena, to the Lord uh, as uh, Ryan and Laura, you guys can come on forward here. We're going to give them a round of applause. <laughs> Pastors Rolando and Holly are going to join us here. We're so excited for you guys. What a blessing from the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalm 127 verse 3 that children are a gift from God. And they are a blessing, a blessing to our lives. And we believe that there is great destiny over this precious little girl who will one day be a mighty woman of God. And so today, we want to dedicate her to the Lord. For those who might be new here to our church family, we don't baptize infants because the Bible doesn't give us any example of doing that. And it also tells us that when they believe, they were baptized. And Precious Lena right now doesn't know how to believe yet. She's going to be taught that here in these next formative years of her life. But what the Bible does show us is the example of bringing a child to the house of the Lord and dedicating that child, saying, God, we rec recognize that this baby is a gift from you and that as parents, we want your guidance. And God, we realize that she ultimately belongs to you. And so today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to dedicate this precious little girl to the Lord. Church, would you pray with me right now? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of life. God, we know that each child is a blessing from the Lord. Your word says that from the time we were in our mother's womb that you called us, that you formed us. God, we know that you love us. That is your heart. You're the heart of a father. And God, we know how much you love this precious little girl and the amazing things that you have in store for her life. God, right now, she's just a baby, but we know that if we look in the spirit that we can see a mighty woman of God. And God, we declare your blessings, your protection, your provision over her life. We pray, God, for Ryan and for Laura, God, for their lives. Lord, that you would give them wisdom as parents. God, that you would guide every decision and God, that you would fill their home with your love, joy, and peace. We thank you right now, and we dedicate Lena to you. We say, God, have your way. Have your perfect will in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations, guys. We are so happy for you. 
Amen. Well, we're going to take a second right now to check out our video announcements of what's coming up here at Life Church, and then we're going to go to the word of the Lord. Pastor Rolando is going to bless us today with a word that I know is going to be a blessing to your life. Let's check out the video announcements. We've had an awesome service so far. Thanks for starting your week by gathering and worshiping with us. Sundays are so much better with you. If you're not part of a connect group, there is still time to join during the summer session. Text the word GROUPS to 972-393-2625 and we'll send you a link to the directory. I want to let you know that Resident Youth is taking a break for the next several weeks, so there will not be youth this Wednesday. Resonate will relaunch with a back to school night on August 31st. Stay tuned for that. This week we will have Celebrate Recovery Monday night at 7 and prayer here in the sanctuary Thursday night at 7. Really quick, for those who have never heard of Celebrate Recovery, let me tell you about it. CR is a Bible-based recovery program that has helped so many people find freedom from hurts, habits, and hang-ups. In addition to the 12-step program we offer, we also have an open group that meets here at church every Monday at 7. If this is something that interests you, come check out our open group tomorrow night at 7. Finally, if you have a prayer request, text the word PRAY to the church's number 972-393-2625. Let us know how we can be praying for you this week. You can also text the word CONNECT to 972-393-2625 to contact our ministry team or to take your next step. Now we're going to hear a message from the Word of God. Prepare your heart and mind for what He's going to speak to you today. Well, good morning, church. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Pastor Team, for the opportunity to share the Word of God, and I pray that it's going to be a blessing in uh, the Word that we share today. Um, I want to talk to you uh, about something that has been ministering, and, and I've been pondering, thinking. And when I was growing up, I, um, I had uh, different phases, you know, like we all do. I had uh, the phase where I wanted to be, you know, um, just like my dad, you know, as far as his career and all of that. I saw a lot of my uncles, and, and they were engineers, and, you know, tinkering with computers and software and all of that. So I thought that I wanted to imitate them, right? I wanted to be an engineer. So I, I was growing up, and then uh, in the church where I grew up, it was called uh, First Baptist Church in Monte City, back in Mexico. Uh, I grew up there, and I had a lot of uh, spiritual leaders around me, pastors and leaders that poured into, into you know, the church. And uh, also, uh, something interesting that the connections that they had, because it's a denominational church, they had connections with uh, seminaries you know, in Mexico and also here in the United States. And they, they would bring uh, missionaries, you know, to uh, teach us the Word of God. And they would focus on specific books of the Bible, Hebrews and Galatians and uh, the book of Isaiah. And so we would cover all of that. I was very young, you know, some of, half of that, you know, the sessions I was asleep because, man, it was too much. I was like, man, I don't even understand what they're talking about, doctor, this and that. So I, you know, when I was uh, growing up, I, I saw that. So I wanted to imitate them. Uh, for, uh, for some time in my younger years, I, I was in elementary, middle school. I thought I, I wanted to be a missionary and, um, because I saw them. And I thought, man, that's so cool. That's something I really want to do. I even investigated some of the seminaries that I could go in Mexico, even the one here. I didn't even know I was going to live here. You know, I was going to marry uh, my beautiful gringa over here, you know, from East Texas. And then led me all the way to where the, 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 one of the seminaries that I, I looked up to was right here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I thought, man, that's so cool. So I grew up trying to imitate them, too. And, and then, of course, you know, I, I you know, kept growing up and, and um, you know, in my, my middle school years and early high school, I started to uh, listen to a lot of rock and, you know, a lot of the, 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 the cool music that young people listen to. And, and I wanted to be like one of those, you know, rockers, you know, rock stars. You know, I let my hair grow like up to here. 
I wanted to show a picture and I said, oh, no, I, I better not because I, <laughs> nowadays with the digital age, man, you, you never know what could happen, right? But anyway, maybe one of these days I show you some of my, you know, my teenage years. My kids just laugh and they keep me humble, you know. <laughs> they keep me humble for sure. And uh, so I wanted to be like a rock star. I would, you know, let my hair grow long and dress like them. I wanted to imitate them. And, and also uh, I saw, you know, uh, several influences, even in ministry, my early years, you know, in ministry, uh, I saw uh, some people that were way, way ahead of me, and I wanted to imitate them. Uh, one of them is right here, Pastor Ralph, whose, you know, birthday is today. I remember uh, Pastor Ralph uh, taking time. I invited him to, uh, to lunch, um, and uh, I would take him to one of his favorite restaurants. I don't know if he was, but at least that's what I thought. He told me that the salmon was good, you know, back in, uh, I think it was McGuire's restaurant. And uh, he would sit down with me, and I would ask questions, and I would just pick his brain. And, and I, I remember a lot of that, and, and I wanted to, you know, imitate a lot of that. And I remember one time that he told me something that I never forget, that he told me, I, I asked him, I said, hey, how, wh- how, how do you do what you do? And he said, hey, um, uh, you, you'll be able to do that, but you're going to have to go through the process. And it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. So I had uh, people that I wanted to imitate, right? And I'm sure you, too, had people or uh, influences around you that you wanted to imitate, that you wanted to copy or emulate, and just, you know, kind of follow in their footsteps or in some way or, or another. So in, in the Bible, we also see that. We see this, um, this concept of imitation, and we see it in, you know, in, in all throughout Scripture. And now reading the, 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 the one-year Bible reading plan that we're doing, Pastor Tim, uh, I see that, you know, because I was already preparing. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to ask you if this could be considered part two of your series that you started last week. You know, don't leave the, uh, the door um, unlocked, right? We, we talked about staying sober and, 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 and alert. So I said, well, you know, that really, say, you know, I think it could, it could work. So maybe two or maybe one point, you know, one B, you know, something like that, 1.1. 1. 1. But anyway, in the Bible, we see that in, in reading through the Bible, it, it, you will notice how important the concept of imitation is to God. For example, here, Exodus 25, 8 to 9, it says, uh, God talking to the, to the people of Israel, uh, Moses, he said, have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishes, uh, furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. You see that? Another one, Exodus 25, 40 says, be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. So we see that this is a very, very um, important concept or principle to learn from the Word of God. So I want to talk to you about this. This is the title of, of the message today. Follow the right pattern. Follow the right pattern. Now, w- what do I mean by that? Because, you know, we all may have different ideas, but it, it encompasses, a, you know, some uh, different ideas. For example, following the right pattern it's also learn to do. You know, we learn to do. We mean by following the right pattern that we learn to follow. Follow their example. Learn to imitate. So uh, this, we see it throughout the Bible, like I said. And it could go in the right direction and also could go in the wrong direction. Now, let's uh, see a few examples when... In the Old Testament, God warned Israel against imitating the wrong patterns, right? It can go in the direction that is, is not going to lead you anywhere good. For example, I have a, a few examples of God warning the people of Israel, hey, be careful the patterns that you're following. Deuteronomy 12 says, when the Lord your God goes ahead of you and destroys the nations and you, and you drive them out and live in their land, Do not fall into the trap of following their customs and worshiping their gods. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how do these nations worship their gods? I want to follow their example. You must not worship the Lord your God the way the other nations worship their gods. 
for they perform for their gods every detestable act that the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices to their gods. You see, God warning them, hey, I know imitation is something very powerful. So I'm going to warn you first against it, right? So God was giving that word of warning to, the, to their people, to his people. When you enter the land, another scripture, Deuteronomy 18.9 the Lord your God is giving you, be very careful. You see, there's the warning there. Be very careful not to imitate, not to, imit, not to follow their pattern. The detestable customs of the nations live in there. You see? Because he knew. I'm going to take you to a place, but you're not going to be surrounded by angels. You know? There are going to be things that you're going to see, and I want to make sure that you know. Be, be careful the pattern that you're going to follow. Another one, Leviticus 18.3 says, Do not act like the people in Egypt where you used to live or like the people of Canaan where I'm taking you. You must not imitate their way of life. You see? God, again, warning them. There's a way I want you to live, but you're going you're gonna to have to be careful the example or the pattern that you follow. Even in 2 Kings, now we get out of the, the five first books of the Bible and then we go into the the times of the kings, it says, 17, 2 Kings 17, it says, but the Israelites would not listen. They were as stubborn as the, their ancestors who had refused to believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he had made with their ancestors, and they despised all his warnings. They worshipped worthless idols, so they became worthless themselves. Right here, they followed the example of the nations around them, disobeying the Lord's command not to imitate them. You see? So God is warning the people of Israel because he knows the power of imitation, of following, of emulating. But also in the New Testament, we are encouraged. Now we're going to see the, the opposite, the, the good way. You know, when it goes in the right direction, we're, we are encouraged in the New Testament to imitate the right patterns. For example, 1 Corinthians 4, 6, Paul is saying to the Corinthians, so I urge you to imitate me. Imagine the, 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 the moral authority, the spiritual credibility that Paul has to be able to say, hey, I want you to copy me. I want you to follow my example. Wow, that's a, that's a, lot, of, you know, that's a lot of weight you put on yourself. But then here we have a, a way to understand that better. It says, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul again saying, As you should, and you should imitate me, follow my pattern, as, just as I imitate Christ. In the way I'm following Jesus and his patterns, I want you to follow me, because if you follow me, you are gonna end, you ultimately you're going to be following the pattern of Jesus. That's the pattern I'm trying to follow and, and, and give you. Another example here, Philippians 4, 4, 9. Now, Paul now talking to the, to the church in Philippi. It says, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything, and it's right here, everything. Follow the pattern of everything you heard, everything that I said from me, and saw me doing. Paul is saying, there are things that I said to you, but also you saw me doing. And there's congruency in that. And I want to encourage you that in your spiritual life, at home, at work, with your family, with your friends, that there's congruency in what you say, in what you believe, and in what you do. Because that's going to be so powerful when those two things match. What you do on Sunday, you come and worship and declare, God, you are king. And then you go Monday and you live according to that declaration. There's congruency there. And, and a lot of the times that's one of the main reasons why the world, even in, 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 in families, is very tough uh, for uh, for some people, because they say, well, I see you worshiping and, and clapping and being all happy and nice on Sunday morning at 10. But then we get home, and I don't know what happens, but then it's like a switch, you know. It's like you turn into like this different person. And maybe you, you're not as happy or you react a certain way, but you come again on Sunday, and it's like a transformation again, you know. It's like, and then that creates some incongruency 
It's like, okay, it, this, is, this is not matching. So I want to encourage you that you live a life that is congruent. Not perfect. I'm not saying, oh, you got to be, no, not, it's not about that. It's so having congruency in what I believe, my convictions, and what I do, the way I live. And that's going to be so powerful, so liberating. You don't have to be like debating in your mind, oh, well, this, is this going to match? I might be, what's it, what are they going to, you're not worried about it. Your conscience is clear. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. So that's, uh, that's how we see the power of imitation. And I want to share with you four things um, about this, following the right pattern. Number one, when we surrender our lives to Jesus, we follow a, dis- a different pattern. When we give our lives to Jesus, we no longer follow the pattern that is around us, the pattern of culture, the pattern of society. I know we live in the culture. We live in this, you know, in this society, in this culture, in this world, but we don't have to follow the pattern that we see around us. We follow a different pattern. We follow a different way. We don't want to do life when we give our life to Jesus and say, well, Jesus, here's my, my life. I put my faith in you. But let me live the way I've been living all this time. I mean, it hasn't worked out, you know, that well. Uh, I'm not really happy with it. But, oh, man, it's hard to give that up, you know. And that's when we understand, when I surrender, when I give, when I completely lay my life and surrender my life to Jesus, I follow a different pattern. Listen to what Galatians 2.20 says. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. It is no longer my patterns, the patterns that I've been looking at in society and I'm watching I'm you know, and I'm just you know, surrounded with. It is no longer my way of living. I who live is a different pattern now. I follow the example of Christ, but Christ lives in me. Okay, so I surrender my life to him, and I'm going to have to say, God, in the way that I live, I want to live a different way, not the way that I've, you know, I've always lived it, the way I think is best, my own understanding. I want to live and follow your pattern. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave, me, and gave himself for me. When believers of Jesus Christ, we follow a different pattern. We follow Jesus' example. That's why one of our core values is Christ-like. You know, we want to be like Christ. We want to be like him in the way he lives, talks, and thinks. We want to be like Jesus, Christ-like character. Number two, I imitate God because I am a child of God. And I love that song we just sang, the third song. I'm no longer a slave of fear. I'm a child of God. Not to become one. And I want to kind of elaborate a little bit on this because it may seem simple on the surface. Look, I imitate God because I am a child of God. Not to become one. See what Ephesians 5, 1 to 2 says. Imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do, you see again the the concept of imitating and following patterns. It says, in everything you do, imitate God. Therefore, because you are his dear children. And this is so important because you're not trying to imitate God and follow his example, Jesus' example, to become a child of God. You are already a child of God when you live in Christ. You are already his child. And it is important that we mention this because it's so fundamental. It's essential. Because the enemy is going to try to come and mess with you and try to confuse you about your identity. And that's so important because when you know who you are, when you are so secure and say, I know who I am, then you know what to do. 
When you know who you are, you'll know how to behave. When you know, how, 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 know who you are in Christ, they'll, you, you, you'll know what to do. Young people you know, here, that, that, are, that are hearing right now, when you know who you are, a child of God, you put your faith in Jesus and you gave your life to him, you are a child of God. You are not your mistakes. You're not your weakness. You're not your flaws. And the enemy is going to try to remind you, oh, yeah, I, I, I know what you've done. Yes, that's what I've done, but that's not who I am. I'm a child of God. That's who I am. God loves you unconditionally, and it doesn't matter what you've done last month or even this weekend. You are a child of God, not your mistakes, not your past. And someone here needs to hear that. When you leave this place, that you are reminded, hey, my identity is not that what I did. It's not that, you know, that, that happened to me. My identity is I am a child of God. He's my father and he loves me. And now that I live, I'm not trying to, to become a child. I'm not trying to work to earn his love. He already loves you and he accepts you. You are a child of God. How many of you are thankful for that? And say, yes, thank you, Lord. Because in you, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. It's number three, what you see is what you do. That's uh, kind of encompasses the, the principle of imitating, right? Following the pattern. Um, there's a phrase that, that says, monkey see, finish the phrase. Monkey do. monkey do, right? Monkey see, monkey do. Why? Because it is powerful. What we see determines a lot of the times what we do. Therefore, it becomes imperative that we pay attention to what we see because it's what we're going to do, right? Monkey see, monkey do. What we see around us, what we put in front of us, and I'm not necessarily talking about social media, even though that's a big part now because we live in this world. I mean, we even have now TikTok taught me, right? Hey, what about this? Oh, yeah, TikTok taught me that. It's like, oh, man, that's so cool. And I'm not talking, I'm not bashing, you know, social media or TikTok. It's funny and you learn a lot. But there are also a lot of stuff that you say, you know what, man, you got to be careful with that. You got to be careful with that. Why? Because you're putting in front of you a lot of patterns that you are going to see. And whether you like it or not, th those patterns are going to start influencing you the more you see them. So I like TikTok. I'm not against it, social media and all of that. Never involved in them, but I, you know, I kind of get my, you know, my, my fair dose of it and, and, and stay updated. But I want to make sure that instead of you saying TikTok taught me, you say God taught me. The Word of God taught me. And that's a better example and a better pattern to follow. Don't you agree? Instead of, you know, looking for how do I handle my relationship with my boyfriend? And then the voice, you know, the voice that they, they use in TikTok is like the same voice. You know, it's like um, when your boyfriend doesn't pay attention to you. And then like ding, ping, and then look, when uh, a man is this and that, whenever you're, it was like, man, I was like, you have so much out there. What you see is what you do. So you have to be careful with that. Instead of just allowing TikTok taught me, and I like it and all of that, but you got to say, hey, I'm going to choose a different pattern. I'm going to choose a better pattern. I'm going to choose what God taught me, what the Word of God taught me. I have a, a very good friend here in church, and uh, I love this friend. And he, uh, I saw that. I was inspired um, because of, out of the, in this message because of what I saw, that this is true. What you see is what you do. And my friend uh, has helped us a lot, even like in Supermobile when we make sandwiches. He's been with us, helping us carry, you know, loaves of bread and bringing them here. His name is Lucas. How old is Lucas, Barney? Four, right? It's my four-year-old friend, Lucas. Barney's an, an Evangelina's son. He's, he's, he's cute, and, but I love Lucas. I want to show you a picture of Lucas here, one of, his, one of the pictures that you can see. Maybe uh, you don't know him, but I asked permission. I asked uh, Barney and, and Evangelina uh, permission to just kind of talk a little bit about my son, my, my friend Lucas, their son. It's almost like my son, right? And um, because 
what you see is what you do, and you're going to see how powerful it is. You see Lucas right there. It was one of the baptism Sunday that we had. How happy, you know, he looks, right? And then also you see that uh, another picture. Let's go to the next one. Um, the picture right there, you see? Is, notice that he's right there by the edge of the baptism, baptistry. So he's watching, right? He's seeing. And I didn't know that he was so into it until Barney started to say, hey, uh, Lucas is uh, baptizing at home. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, oh, man, I know Lucas the baptizer now, right? Not John the Baptist, but Lucas the baptizer. <laughs> it's a biblical name, too, you know, one of the, uh, one of the uh, gospels, too. But I said, really? He said, yeah. He started baptizing Everyone is like, what do you mean? Say, yeah, even his own uh, t- teddy bears and stuffed animals, he gathered them all up and, you know, built a little baptistry there with a basket. And, and he put himself, you know, in, in, in a jacket or, you know, put the towel, and he's baptizing everything. <laughs> I'm like, wow, it's, that's awesome. And he said, yeah, but he says, uh, I'm going to baptize like Pastor Orlando, right? And uh, now you see why, because he's seen you know, us here and seeing me, they're baptized people, right? That's awesome. And say, yeah, he's baptizing. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, but he, wanna, he wants to do it every day, right? <laughs> and every day, and so those, those uh, teddy, you know, the teddy bears and the stuff, animal, man, they're so, um, they're so holy now, you know? <laughs> I thought, man, send Chucky and all of the other ones, right? <laughs> po- send Pokemon and all of the other ones and baptize them too, right? <laughs> And that was so powerful. So, so uh, to me, it was beautiful. I see kids here coming and raising their hands and, and just imitating us and their parents when they, when they worship and, when, you know, their, their, their expression. And that's beautiful. And when I saw that, uh, I thought, wow, the power of imitation. What we see is what we do. He's seeing this. He's doing that. So now you understand how powerful it is. I asked Barney, say, hey, can I show you, can I show some of those videos? And, and let's see Lucas the baptizer, you know, baptize some of these uh, new believers. What are you doing, Lucas? Baptize. Okay, baptize. Ready? <laughs> what are you doing, Lucas? Baptize. What are you doing, Lucas? I'm doing a Pastor Rolando? What are you doing there? Baptize. Baptize? Pastor Rolando baptize? Oh, wow. Muy bien. Okay. Felicidades. Congratulations. <laughs> you see, that's uh, uh, beautiful how what we see is what we do, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the times. Now, if you sign up for baptism next week, you know, next month, don't worry, we're not going to keep you that long, right, <laughs> in the water, right? It's a little faster, a little more faster than that, right? But I'm sure Elmo is now a believer too, right? (laughs) But what we see is what we do. So you don't have to follow the pattern, but you got to be careful what you put in front of you. You don't have to date every girl that you find, that you meet. You don't have to raise your kids the way everybody else is is raising it. You know, you don't have to... to, uh, to treat your husband or wife in the way that, you know, that the that culture teaches us. You don't have to manage your finances the way everybody is financed. You don't have to do what, every, what everybody else is doing or what you see in everybody else because they post mainly all the highlights. You know, Pastor Tim has thought about this. They're going to post everything that's great, but you don't know what happened before or after, even five minutes after that. You know, they could be like, yeah, great. And then after that, they're not even talking. You know, they're like, go back to their phones or to their own world. So we don't know. So what we got to see is that, hey, I'm going to see a different pattern. I'm going to seek, you know, God's pattern for my life. God has shown you a different pattern. He's given us a different pattern. And you have a different pattern from God to raise your family, 
to love your husband or wife, to raise your, you know, to, to live in your marriage, to f- handle your finances. In every relationship that you have, there's a different pattern that is a lot better. What's out there? Jesus said it this way. What I see is what I do. But he said it in a better way. John 5, 19. So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. What I see is what I do. A lot of the patterns that we follow, we're not... We're not like they, they, somebody taught us that, you know. It's like, okay, I'm going sit, to sit, sit down. I'm going to teach you how to react when your, wife, when your wife gets on your last nerve, all right? And then you're going to do it that way. When somebody cuts in front of you and you're driving on 635 at 5 in the afternoon, I'm going to show you how to react. I'm going to show you what cuss words to use, <laughs> what finger to lift, you know, to flip. <laughs> not this one, the pinky. I'm going to teach you which one, right? A lot of those things are caught. Nobody taught us that. Why do I scream at my kids when I'm stressed? What pattern are you following? Why do I get so stressed out when, you know, when I feel like finances are, gonna, are not going to, you know, we're not going to make it by the end of the month? We're going to follow a different pattern. I think the pattern of the world is it's proven that it's, it's not working. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And this is a way to, you know, summarize the power of imitation. Two words here that I want to highlight. And I think it helps us understand the, the gist of this verse. Confirm, conform and transform. Conform, that's the warning. Do not conform. Do not shape your values, beliefs, actions, behaviors in culture, from culture, in your surroundings, trying to adapt to their expectations or social pressure. It says, do not conform to that. That's something in the outside. But then Paul says, but be transformed. Not conform, but be transformed. Because transform has to do from the inside, your nature, your character, what's inside. When it's inside, then you behave, then you speak, then you think, then you start living because of what's already on the inside. That's transformation. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Be transformed. A different pattern. And maybe you say, you know what? I, I don't know because what I saw in my family growing up, my surroundings, it was dysfunction. Whatever name you want to put to that dysfunction in my, you know, my parents growing up, the, the childhood that I had, maybe I lived and you lived in, in, and there was lack of money. It was always that, that worry about not having money and living, you know, uh, always with lack. Maybe it was uh, the way that the words that were exchanged, attitudes towards relationships, family, marriage. Whatever it is, maybe it was more of, you know, I I struggle with finances. I don't know what to do. Maybe there's there's an addiction that I I seem to kind of just get into the pattern and I don't see how to break that. Whatever that pattern is, God is showing, say, hey, I, I can show you a different pattern. I can show you a different pattern. But the first thing you gotta do and remember is break that pattern. If you lived and grew up in dysfunction, you don't have to pass that on and continue that. You can break the pattern today. You say, you know what? God, I know that I may have not have the best upbringing, 
But I know that now I am your child and you're showing me a different pattern. I want to follow your pattern and the way I live. I treat others. And you can break that pattern. It's going to be hard because you say, I don't have any references. I don't have any, any form of, like, uh, you know, a, a, a lighthouse that says, oh, okay, that's how I treat my wife. I don't have that. But then Jesus said, hey, I know. But I'm going to teach you how. I'm going to show you a different pattern. My word is going to illuminate and say, oh, that's the pattern I need to break. I don't have to be a slave to the patterns that I, in my life, in my past, to fear, condemnation, shame, any of those things. I am a child of God. That's why I mentioned earlier, this is so critical. Because when you know who you are, you know what to do based on what's on the inside. I'm going to ask the band to come here. I'm going to ask you, all of us here, to stand. And let's... Uh, uh, just seal this word and let God, allow God to speak to you and say, what are some of the patterns that I need to let go of? What are some of those examples? What are, what are some of those uh, uh, things that I've been imitating that I need to let go of? And it's been hard sometimes, but I need to let go and break that pattern and create a new one. God says, I'm going to show you how to live because it's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. So let's sing together and allow, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. more time today. Let's declare, I am a child of God. be that right now you don't feel like a child of God. One of the things that Pastor Rolando so eloquently taught us today is that it's not by our own works uh, that we're able to change this pattern. It's because of what God does in us that we become a child of God. It's by His work. And so you don't have to do this on your own. You don't have to think, well, when I change all these other patterns in my life, then I can become a child of God. No, once you become a child of God, you're able to change all these other things because you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Before we end our service today, would you just close your eyes? And if there's somebody watching online, there's somebody here in our sanctuary today, and you want to become a child of God, you don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to behave well for a certain amount of days, weeks, or months. Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross when he died for our sins. And it is through him that we are justified. It is through him that we're brought into right standing with God. Not by our own works. It's through Jesus. And so today, you can receive the salvation of God, it's a gift and it's free. Jesus paid the price for it so that it's free for you and I. And when you do so, you're going to break off the patterns that have been keeping you down, that have been making you re re to repeat, to do the things you didn't want to do, as Paul said in Romans. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do is what I actually end up doing. But 
now we are in Christ Jesus and there's therefore now no condemnation we become a new creation in Christ Jesus if you would like to become a child of God then I want to encourage you right now to say a word of prayer with me would you just lift your hand towards the heavens say God I want to be your child I want to receive your love for my life would you repeat these words after me say Heavenly Father please forgive me of all of my sins. I give my life to you. I surrender all. So teach me your word and show me your ways. Those are the ways I want to imitate. I will follow and I will imitate you all of my days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what he just did in someone's heart today. Listen, if you just said that prayer, we want to help you. The Bible says you were just born again, and so you need to grow up in God. You are a a newborn, and we want to help you. And we're your spiritual family. We're going to help you learn how to stand on the Word of God and how to walk and how to run and do everything and become everything that he's called you to be. We celebrate with you today. You can talk to one of us right after the service today, or you can text the word CONNECT to our our church phone number, and we will follow up with you through that means, if that's what you prefer. We'd love to greet you. Pastor Rolando, myself, one of us as pastors, we'd love to greet you, shake your hand, and congratulate you. We're going to be dismissed today. Thank you, Pastor Rolando, for this great word. I know it's been a blessing to my life and to many others here. Amen. Well, church, we're going to be dismissed today with the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. By his grace, in Jesus' name, amen. We're dismissed. God bless you guys. Have an amazing week.